What's up, guys? Welcome to this episode of Beers and Breakdowns. Today we're doing a movie. Today we're doing a movie called Mile 22. Honestly, I could equate this movie to rounding up every Starbucks employee you've ever seen and giving them all the tactical gear on the planet and uh, unlimited resources and telling them to go run operations. Mm. There's The tactics are awful. They have all this equipment, all these resources. They do all this crazy stuff as far as intel gathering um, and Overwatch and drones, and they have all the Gucci equipment. But then every time they get in a tick or every time they get in troops in contact, they make horrible decisions and like do the stupidest possible. So we're gonna jump in and show you some of the mistakes that they're making, especially in the first scene when they're clearing this house. It may look like they know what they're doing, but if you've ever cleared a house before, done CQB, you don't even have to be military. If you're just practicing as a civilian, um, taking some courses as a civilian, you just take it seriously for home defense, whatever, you're going to know that this is a show and that if you ever had multiple people to clear a house, you would never do it this way. And they pay the price for it. So at least the movie shows that. It shows you know the bad guys getting a win because of their room clearing and their tactics. So let's jump into this initial scene and start pointing out all the plethora of flaws tactically that come with this movie. Drinking old fashioned, by the way, this is this is what I'm drinking. I'm drinking beer, I'm drinking man beer. As always, I've driven this point home since I, by the way, it's great to be back. I feel like we haven't done one in this set, me and you for a long time. I so, know. It's, you know, I, I champion for Kurt being in these and I'm sure you guys do too, because I have no experience tactically speaking, but Sometimes we have no choice. It's how timing works. Here I am. But I am super happy to be back at this desk with the FNG Academy behind us drinking man beer for the men out there. We got the uh, FML, right? So I'm holding it down for all the alpha bros out there, okay? Is that so, an alpha bro beer? Yeah, it's alpha. Of course it is. Every, everything I drink is alpha. My life is like alpha. Like toxic masculinity type yeah, alpha? Yeah, exactly. I resent that. Yeah, I mean, this beer should be called to toxic masculinity. You're disgusting. That's what my beer can should be called. We're looking for 111 Christmas, maybe a Christmas lane or a Christmas circle. That's hard to watch. Ah, that breach is so hard to watch. It's so frustrating. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm watching, but to see his frustration is amazing. Oh, it pisses me off. It's dude. And I know it's like frustrating for you guys to watch me be on my tactical high horse. Um, I'm not like this normally. I promise you guys I don't walk around talking about tactics. I, I never discuss tactics. I can honestly care less. But when I have to watch a movie for beers and breakdowns and I have to look at it tactically... That's my job, is to evaluate the tactics. And this first scene pisses me off so bad because there's so many mistakes. First of all, you're about to approach your target, right? You set up this ruse to where you're looking for somebody. Excuse me, hello, are you, is someone in here? And then you have this like fake conversation and then you throw in a flashbang. Why wouldn't you just knock on the door as soon as they open the door, throw the flashbang? What's the point of the stupid conversation asking about where the person is. Mm -hmm. If you know you're gonna flashbang it and kick open the door, all you need is that door to open. Right. So there's no point in the whole conversation. Second, huge part that pisses me off. You throw a flashbang in the house, it's not even a nine banger, it's a single bang. So the reason, if you don't know what a nine banger is, um, it's nine flashes of light within one bang. So they call it a nine banger. That's what we use in SF. It's just, so it continues to go off nine times so you get a longer um, exposure period that you're disorientating your targets mm -hmm. so i you know as an oda as a team we're used to the nine bangers so as they're going off they're not disorienting us they're only doing it to the the enemy so we can continue to flow and clear while they're flinching and you know dealing with the brightness dealing with the noise covering their ears hiding and all that stuff so that's how we disorient them um, and get the tactical advantage in that situation so i would have thrown a nine banger not a single bang 
The second thing is, once they throw that nine banger, he kicks or throw the single bang, he kicks open the door, and they just stay there. They just stand in the fucking doorway. So all someone would have to do is come from the second floor with a fully automatic weapon or any weapon system, look down on them, which they clearly would not be affected by the flashbang because they're on the second floor. Mm-hmm. They're not in the, the same room with it. And they would could just start blasting these dudes who are just standing in the doorway. And then finally, what seems after what seems like minutes of them standing in the doorway and not flowing and moving in, he breaks off to go clear, finally, and goes by himself. And then what does he do? He goes to the back door to open the back door to let other teammates come in. Why would you do that? Why wouldn't you just have those teammates on the stack with you? Right. You, this whole ruse is the, the idea is that they had this ruse, right? So they're going to knock on the door. Hey, we're looking for so-and-so. Oh, I'm so confused. And then you throw a banger in. Mm-hmm. But if you know you're going to do that anyway, why wouldn't you just boot the door open, throw the banger in, and flow in with the team? Right. That way I could have two people go left, two people go right, and then we clear this thing properly. Right. You know, once we clear the first floor, uh, flex cuff everybody, put them downstairs. We got one person pulling security on the second floor in case anybody comes down with a gun. You could snap them, and then that person holding security, we stack on them. Then we go upstairs, and then we clear the second floor. Now we're locked down. We're good. Mm -hmm. Now we're all secure. Does that make sense? Yeah. So the the way they went about this is absolutely ridiculous. Like they took all the power in their unit and just broke them up, separated Mm -hmm. them, and did the weakest entry on the planet. Mm -hmm. And then they ended up paying for it. So it gets... It gets better, so they ended up paying the price. What's up guys, this video is sponsored by 18 Alpha Fitness. If you haven't checked it out, and if you wanna go special operations, you need a good fitness plan. Go check out Kevin over at 18 Alpha Fitness. He's a former Green Beret. He knows what he's doing. His post job from the military, from Special Forces, was helping uh, Air Force Special Operations get physically fit. This guy is on point, and he's a great dude. He could do custom plans and uh, just a common plan that I use, which is awesome, the kettlebell program, but I highly recommend you get a custom plan. Use code word buck and he'll hook you up. That was easy. What door handle just falls off like that? With a keypad. Yeah. No, it's like not secure at all. He's like, eh, and it's like. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, oh, give her a different language so she doesn't up her lines. I'm sorry, that was rude. All right, pause. So here's another issue. So stupid. So they're they're relying on Overwatch Intel to tell them how many targets are in the building. He said, I see five. And so they clear until they find five, and then they stop clearing. So if Overwatch was wrong, you're just going to let that guy so float if, around? So if Overwatch is wrong, you keep clearing? First of all, we don't have Overwatch that could look into a building that has a roof on it and say how many people are inside of it. Okay. There's no Overwatch with an x-ray vision that's like, I can see like 10 people in this structure. You know, like all that James Bond shit. Uh I've never seen that with all the, this isn't Call of Duty where you hover over with a drone and all of a sudden everyone's in triangles. Like you can't see through a roof. You know, we could do that shit in Afghanistan because there's no roof. So you could see into the compound and be like, hey, you got five dudes in there. Roger that. I don't care how many guys, like let's say we're in Afghanistan and we have a bird overhead and he says there's five guys in that compound. Mm -hmm. I don't give a the number. We're clearing that compound as if we don't know the number. Right. So there could be five. There could be ten. You're not going to base how you clear off your intel Hmm. And how many people are in the room? So I that see. guy wasn't done clearing, and he was like, we already got five. What are we doing? Hmm. Like, okay, so what if there's six, seven, eight in that room, right. and that you didn't clear, and now they come out and start blasting you? It's just stupid. <laughs> it's like, okay, well, we could finish doing our jobs and just clear the rest of the fucking upstairs, and you'd be done. Close it out. Okay. Go to five and three, right? What was that? So pause it. So this dude does a door breach by himself. 
and then clears it by himself. Why? You have a whole team of people. Why can't one other person go up with you? So he's, he places the door charge and then looks away from it. He hits the door charge and is staring at the floor looking away from it. So what if somebody's in there, mm-hmm. he breaches, they come out shooting. He's hiding from mm-hmm. the charge. That's why you would never do a door breach room entry by yourself. You would have the door charge and you would have a number two man at least holding security on the door. And then you would be like, one, two, three, ready, ready, breach, whatever you say, breach the door. He keeps security on the whole time. Then you pop up, flow in. He would probably go in first and then you would just pull up second. Mm. So you already have eyes on the door. I'm going to go ready, ready, breach. Boom. You're going to go. I'm going to stack up behind you. You, whatever corner you take, I take the opposite. Okay. And then we flow in and clear. But you have a whole team of people and think it's a good idea that one guy is like doing breaches and clears by himself. Like, in what universe is that like a, a good tactical decision? What's the origin of this team, by the way? Like, what, what, what is this organization they're like, that they're, they're supposed from? To, they're supposed to be this high in CIA. So, top secret CIA unit. Okay. So, it's not like, so a, the best it's not like the an best. actual military unit. So, it's just a. Well, our top. Our it's also top not secret, people off the street, but. Well, our top secret CIA units are Ground Branch, which is all like former CAG, former SEAL Team 6. Mm-hmm. You know, there's SF guys in there that were career military. Okay. So we have, you know, Ground Branch CIA that's like the the best of the best as far as tactics. So this is clearly a stain. Yeah. like On what no, they should be doing. No yeah. CIA unit, elite CIA unit is going to be doing shit like this. And Mark Wahlberg. And then you're sending them into the, they're in the U.S. So that's not how we operate in the U.S. <laughs> like no fucking unit anywhere that we own is going in the U.S. and doing room clears, breaches, and military operations. Mm-hmm. Nobody, I would love to hear an argument against this. There's nobody doing Afghanistan style operations inside the U.S. Mm. Are there operations? Absolutely. I was on the police department. I was on a small team in the police department. We were doing covert operations. We had guys in civilian clothes going into clubs, finding and locating gangsters. And then we had, you know, police officers all over the place ready to catch them as they're leaving. We're chasing down uh, guys with guns out of the clubs. Like we've done covert operations in the police department. You're not doing military style operations like this where you have door breaches, like SWAT does that shit isolated. It's like an isolated, you know, incident. It's not like a a full out operation. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I feel you. It's just they they tried to blend too much of Afghanistan, Iraq with United States and it just makes it completely unrealistic. Got a faint heat signal here in the second floor, southwest corner. Ooh. All right, pause. So there it is. Perfect example of why you do certain things and why special operations does certain things with combatants. And I don't care who you are. If we're clearing the house, you're an enemy combatant. Uh, that doesn't mean we're going to shoot you. It just means that you're going to get treated like an enemy combatant until we're done clearing the house. Mm-hmm. So you're going to get flex cuffed and you're going to get isolated. You're going to have a certain area in the house where enemy combatants go. So you're going to check them. You're going to clear them, flex cuff them, hands behind their backs, flex cuff on their belly, on their stomachs, you know, in a row, whatever, in a certain room. That room is going to be cleared just to make sure that they don't have access to any weapons, that they don't have any knives on them. They're going to, you know, that they don't have knives in their um, ankles that they can get to, in their boots, things like that. What's a flex cuff? A flex cuff is, it's a flexible handcuff, but it's okay. just like zip ties, a thick zip tie. Okay. And they're just the best way to carry because you can carry 10 of them in a small area on your back mm. instead of having a bunch of handcuffs. Okay. So they're super light, you know, easy to carry, and it's quick and it works really well. So you would just 
flex cuff all your detainees. You may flex cuff and blindfold all your detainees, so that way they're not seeing what you're doing, seeing patterns of movement, seeing your face, seeing your tactics, SOPs, because if you're going to let them live, all that stuff is intel for them. Mm. So you may flex cuff them, hoods, you know, cover them, cover their heads. Um, in Afghanistan, we had a couple guys walk up on base, um, trying to give us intel, and we flex cuffed them and put them in uh, head covers so they didn't start, you know, viewing our base and trying to take mental note of the base because that's an easy tactic for them. It's like, oh, I have information on Al Qaeda. I have information on ISIS. And then they come into the base, you invite them in and be like, oh, you're our friends. Yeah, come tell us all your information. And then they just start scanning your base and saying, mm -hmm. this is their tactics. This is what they did when I told them I had information. This is who I talked to. This is the name of the guy I talked to. This is what he looked like. This is where they took me. Um, this is the difference between the SF guys camp and the regular army camp. All that's intel. So as soon as they come on camp, if you don't know who they are, they need to be uh, heads covered. You could do earmuffs on them. So you could put ear earmuffs and then cover their heads so they can't hear you guys talking. Mm -hmm. All that stuff needs to be taken into account. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so when you're clearing the house like this, at the very least, you're going to flex cuff them and then do a thorough search of that room to make sure that there's no weapons underneath the, the desk. And that could be kicking everything over it may look you know rudimentary like you're just breaking everything but in actuality you're searching under by kicking over a desk you know you you, you get a different view a different angle okay so every one of them should have been flex cuffed on the floor either heads covered they could have been gagged um so they're not communicating but a lot more than just putting them standing against a wall Comment down below if you guys enjoyed the, the Joe Rogan tirade. <laughs> Which, by the way... We that got, was unplanned. It was so bad we got demonetized for it. So that's, <laughs> <laughs> just know if you decide to go on an on a alien... Um, Tangent. I guess, I don't know, it was the butthole... Pen I don't, there's no way to say it was like a demonetized again. Because so, you, you don't know if they have a butthole, so you can't say that it's a butthole penetration. Just saying, if you want to go ham they're on, the ones penetrating. If you want to go ham on Alien and Joe Rogan threesome, you're going to get demonetized. Go to Kim. You have a hole here and a hole there. Pause it. That shit cracked me up because the Walking Dead chick goes up to this her teammate who's got a round in this fucking forehead <laughs> and she's checking him to see if he's dead. I'm like, listen, dude, if I, I, I walk man. up, if I walk up and you're uh, you know, out, uh, and you got a hole straight in your forehead. You dickhead, you better check for a pulse. Are you serious? It could have just hit the unvital parts. People have been shot in the head plenty of times it's and lived. It's dead not center in the dome piece. Bro, plenty of people have been shot in the face, in the head, and lived. Just check the pulse. That's See fair. if I'm still I mean, alive. Okay, fair. I may be useless after that. I thought that was that. pretty ridiculous. I may walk. walk on my knees for the rest of my life, but I'll still be alive. Uh, okay. I mean, I'll check. You get shot in the forehead. I'll just check, for, check a pulse. for a pulse. If not, what if I'm alive and I'm just like, like somewhere... Be like, I wish you checked. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Why is this shirt so clean? F***ing checkered shirt. John Malkovich. It's good. He doesn't belong in this nonsense. So this shit, this kills me when it comes to like uh, movies, tactics, Weapon selection. Weapon selection is everything. You're gonna when you think about your weapon selection for an operation, you're gonna think about your infill, you're gonna think about the operation itself, and then you're gonna think about exfill. So we have multiple people. We have a team of people minus the one that was shot in the head who almost survived apparently. And uh, now we it's, we're going to exfill. We're leaving this suburban house to go walk out front. And get in our car and drive away. We want to be surreptitious. So that way, you know, we could just slide and blend in. Um, and then exfil as is, is easily as possible without being identified by the neighbors. 
Um, but instead, we have fucking Ronda Rousey wearing a drop leg holster, carrying an AR or whatever uh, assault rifle she had. I forgot to pay attention. She had a full assault rifle slung, a drop leg holster, and is clearly like kitted out. You need to pick your weapon systems and your outfit based on your exfil plan. And then your exfil plan is to just walk out the front door and get in a civilian vehicle all nonchalant. Mm -hmm. You're going to try to be surreptitious about it. You need to pick something where you could easily hide your weapon system. Not walk out w with a slung rifle and a drop leg holster with a pistol in it. What's surreptitious mean? Like, um... Because I think syrup. Yeah, like, so like one, of the, one of the... One of the... In training, one of the uh, CRIF guys... Uh -huh. So in our CRIF Combat Reaction Force, it, they went away, but it used to be like all direct action, uh, you know, CQB stuff. Sure. They were really good at what they did, but for surreptitious, he would say... You guys need to enter syrup delicious. <laughs> and I'm like, what, dude? Syrup and he's like, so when you're trying to get in there, you need to be all syrup delicious about it. <laughs> and you got to, you got, <laughs> you got to come in sliding in like no one could tell. You know what I'm saying? So you got to dress all like this so you can get on all syrup delicious. And I was like, is he fucking saying syrup delicious? I'm pretty sure he's a syrup delicious. Does he mean That's syrup? fucking awesome. Does he mean syrup tishes? So it's just, it's just like secretive, like. Since you first said surreptitious on the channel, I did think waffles. Yeah, see? I'm not going to lie, so. You know, <laughs> syrup delicious. Makes Dude, sense. he was roided the fuck out, just this massive jacked ass He's like, I just want more calories, bro. <laughs> bro, he was fucking huge, and he's just like cauliflower ears, just massive. Uh, he came to, to training one day, and he had a huge black eye swelled, and we're like, what happened to the instructor? And he's like, ah, we were at the bar last night, and he got in a fight with a couple dudes. Mm. He won. But he got in a fight with a couple dudes and his fucking eye was just swollen shut. Due to the nine ancestral tenants. <laughs> really? So fuck the operation as it's happening. Let's just stop and re-examine footage. Yeah. Oh. So this whole this whole movie, this whole scene is about transporting this prisoner who has information to as where like nukes are located or something. So they have to get him to this exfil plane. Basically, the rest of the movie is this transport from it's 22 miles. This 22 mile transport. Oh, okay, I see. That's why it's called so it's a 22. 10 minute drive. Hmm. If you're driving really fast. <laughs> this whole movie is based on like a 15, you know, 15, 20 minute drive. Mm. And then they hit all this traffic. Everything that could go wrong with this drive goes wrong. Then they get attacked by motorcycles because everyone attacks someone on a motorcycle. All bad guys drive motorcycles. I don't know, understand what's the deal with bad guys on motorcycles. You're in a car. They're in a motorcycle. How hard is it to go? Yeah, poof. Yeah, done. Yeah, poof. Yeah, done. Oh, you're behind me? Slam on the brakes. Yeah, blah, boof. Yeah, done. If you come after me, like let's say a whole group of motorcyclists are like, we're taking Buck out. Mm -hmm. I'm going to fuck up so many of those dudes <laughs> so quickly and so easily. Police officer story, no joke. So I'm driving my police car and we have this issue in Denver with these guys, these fucking losers losers on these little pit bikes <laughs> you sir so they have these little like pit bikes that they soup up mm -hmm. and then they mob around like a little the 50s mini yeah. motorcycle gang they're so fucking annoying but every weekend they mob around denver thinking they're hot shit one time i'm driving my police car and i get like 15 of them and they come behind me on the sides of me and in front of me and they start breaking mm -hmm. so they're boxing me in so I was like, what are these guys going to do? Like, are they going to start shooting at me? Are they like, what, what's the plan here? It was just like a movie. They all boxed me in. You think I was fucking nervous? Hell no. These idiots are on like fucking tiny motorcycles. <laughs> like this would have been an episode of fucking Mario Kart, dude. <laughs> I would have just been like, -ba, -ba, <laughs> like all them bitches would have been wiped all over the fucking pavement within like five seconds. That shit would have been the easiest thing I had done all day. I had a harder time taking a shit 
that morning than it would have been to wipe out all these fucking dumbasses on their little pocket bikes that thought they were some kind of motorcycle. They're like, oh, he's going to stop and get out with his weapon and start, like, doing shit, right? It's like, yeah. no, it's I'm like, just No, nah, bitch, I'm just going to turn and... Five of you are gone. And then we turn this way. The other five of you are fucking gone. I'm going to slam on my brakes. Your dumbass partner behind me is going to come through my back windshield. He's gone. And then the guy in front of me, I'm going to punch it and chase his ass until I tire tap his little bitch oh, ass. Oh, face hurts. And watch his fucking face slide across the pavement. This was supposed to be threatening. It was like being ganged up on by a bunch of four-year-olds. I was like, I'm going to kick the fuck out of all you little kids. This shit was so stupid, bro. They were thought they were being threatening. And I was like, my guy, I got this <laughs> fucking close. I got this close to justifying it in my head that I was like being attacked. In danger. In yeah. danger. And I was like, can I sell this? <laughs> It's terrible, but it's true. <laughs> it's true. I was sitting there thinking about it. I'm like, I'm getting boxed in by these guys who think they're cool. And they literally look like they're fucking like a monkey fucking a football on these tiny little motorcycles. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, if I if I could justify this, I'm about to take five or six of these bitches out and just wipe them across the pavement and laugh my ass off because my patrol car maybe will get a dent in it. Yeah. And these guys are fucking toast. <laughs> that shit happened. So like when you watch these movies and all these motorcycles are pulling up and they're jumping things and they're doing all this stupid shit. As someone who's been in a similar situation, kind of, you know, <laughs> kind of, mine were like children on little baby bikes that thought they were cool. Mm -hmm. It's it's not threatening at all. You you would be so easy just to be like, oh my god, <laughs> dude, just act like you're a fucking eighty year old senile man and just start swerving and you're taking their whole squad out, son. That shit would be game over. And if you really want to be a dick, just be like, I don't know what happened, and back up. Okay. <laughs> 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 It's, I, I don't understand if it's the director. I don't understand. Now we know it's not the actor because right. here's Mark Wahlberg who was in one of the best war movies ever made. Mm -hmm. Fucking it up. So it's not the actor. I mean, it could, I mean it's partly the actor, right? Because the actor can fuck it up. Sure. But it's not solely the actor. So what was so good about um, Lone Survivor with Mark Wahlberg who crushed it but you also and now to... you, this is like... Not good at all because he's acting like he's in a fucking paintball tournament. There's so many moving parts to these movies. You know what I mean? Like director, yeah, director, cinematographer, editor, cinematographer. Like editing's a big deal. Yeah. It's like it's essentially there's so many different points of a movie, so many different moving parts that it's hard to, um, I guess, compare it to something like Lone Survivor, which obviously had a star cast, had a star director, had a star editor, and like the way that they put it together was all cohesive, right? But when it's not. This is a good example of that. It's it's you lose hard it. you to... lose all you lose all the realness of it, and like it becomes a, a game of uh, what's that stuff that guys do for practice for Sims? It's uh, with the pellets. Airsoft. Airsoft. Mm -hmm. This you know, not making fun of airsoft. I think it's a great training technique for people. You know, it's a chance to try out gear, use tactics, all that stuff, but. With airsoft, there's going to be a lack of fear. And I would even argue that airsoft has far more fear involved in it than this does. This has zero fear. This is a movie set. and But it can be done because, like I said, 13 Hours did a really good job at adding fear to it. I felt like they were in danger, but this is just not it. You want fear? Yeah, I hate this thing. That's why this team sucks. Like, every single time that they get in any kind of contact, they lose. They clear the first house, they get their asses kicked. Uh -huh. They get, they leave the guy open, he shoots one of them, he kills one of them, she gets shot through the wall. Then they get in another tick where all they have to do is drive 22 miles, and they get their fucking asses whooped. 
It's literally like Starbucks employees that they collected and gave them all <laughs> the fucking intel they could have and all the money, and this is what they came up it's with. It's like a learner's course. Yeah, the, the tactics are terrible, and they lose constantly. Mm-hmm. It's trying to show realism, but all you made it look like was that you're the worst team on the fucking planet. Mm-hmm. The minute anything happens, you guys get fucked. <laughs> Yo, pause it. Straight up Call of Duty, son. You gotta throw. You get in that shitty ass four wheel drive for that Warzone two. You throw it in reverse, slam into a bunch of cars, and then you go honk at the squad to jump in. Is that a Call of Duty? <laughs> yeah. I don't play video games, so I don't know. Dude, I love Call of Duty, man. And so you jump, you find whatever shitty car you can find, which uh-huh. is usually like a light blue hatchback or a white hatchback, or just like that. You throw it in reverse. It's hard to drive, so you slam into everything on the way. And as soon as you get to your squad, you start honking, meh, 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 for them to jump in the car so you can peel off. Dude, that was straight Call of Duty scene. They ripped off Call of Duty. They lost another one because they fucking I suck. I do. Well, the child one, you gotta get his way out of here. Child one working on extraction point. He he's relying on Intel, on Overwatch to get him out of an apartment building. He's like, you have to find us a way out of here, bitch. You want to know how to get him out of an apartment building? There are big fucking red signs that say exit. <laughs> Walk your bitch ass towards it, and you're going to find your way out of the apartment building. Well, why would you need Overwatch to get you out of an apartment building? I don't know. If I put you in an apartment building, in a hallway, uh-huh. can you not get your way out? I mean, I would assume that you would have a... Able go left, go right. Why? Can you not find your way out of an apartment building? If you stay in a hotel, can you not find the exit so you can go out and... Get something to eat. Get some coffee. <laughs> no, but I would assume there would be a. Do you need to call somebody and be like, where to go? I need an exfil now. Roger but, that. But that's not. Find a sign that says exit. Walk towards it. But that's not cool guy stuff, Sean. Cool. Once you get to the sign that says exit, there'll be a door. Open that door. You should see sky. It's like the Matrix when he's guiding him out of that office, Ugh. right? He's like, go. Fucking civilian. <laughs> Go get her. You're gonna take two giant, ass, the world's biggest fucking grenades I've ever seen in my life. I, I was even... gonna say, is it is it me or are they not just dressing up grenades at this point to look like these huge chrome? Dude, like it was half chrome, massive. half anodized black. Like yeah, it like, was like this big. What ass... was on that grenade? It was like huge. And then she took a piece of duct tape this big. Like, were you running out of duct tape? <laughs> Did you have to fucking? <laughs> Did you have to be so stingy on the duct tape? You got one strip of duct tape that's less than a foot long on this fucking basketball of a grenade, and you're taping it to a door with one strip. That bitch would have taken like five strips of tape to the door. Second of all, why are you taping it to the door? What kind of tactic is it to tape a grenade to the door and then tape a grenade to the wall as an exfil? What was the point? I got an idea. Just throw, just throwing this out there. It's a stupid idea. I know. I know. I don't know shit about shit. I don't know what I'm talking about. This is really stupid, but I'm just going to throw it out there. You walk up to that door, instead of taping a grenade to it, and then having to hide behind a mattress, which I don't know if you guys know this, but mattresses don't stop shrapnel. So you still would have schwacked that little kid that you're next to, and you would have been ble- fucking breathing out holes in your lungs because... You have two grenades going off right next to you, and you have one little mattress in front of you. Good luck with that. Second of all, try this. You walk up to the door. This sounds fucking crazy. (laughs) The stupidest thing I've ever heard, and I don't even know why I'm suggesting it. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. But you take the grenade, you pull the pin. (laughs) 
Hear me out. Hear me out. I know you guys think I'm stupid. I know you think it's fucking ridiculous. <laughs> Hear me out. Mm. I have an idea, right? Crazy. Open the door. <laughs> Throw the grenade. <laughs> Close the door. See what happens. <laughs> Just a thought. Instead, we're going to pretend like we're fucking MacGyver and tape a grenade to the door and then pull the pin, which Murphy's Law would have caused that grenade to fall. And then because it's round, because it's wrapped in some kind of aluminum, which probably would have created more shrapnel, most likely would have rolled towards you, giving you a real bad situation. And then you have one taped to the wall with one fucking piece of duct tape. What the fuck? Like, none of that made sense. And then, mm. like, somehow you're just going to sit between the... Anyway. Hang on, hang on. Yeah, boy. I love that. Ready? Burr. Burr. We've talked about that noise before. By the way, the red on her eye makes no sense in terms of an injury. You know what's crazy is that, first of all, the fact that he said he's not a double agent. Music. He's a triple agent. You don't need to say he's a triple agent. When you said he's not a double agent, we fucking got it. We're not stupid. Like, you've been double crossed. We got it. He, like, it, him saying he's not a double agent, cool. Love mm -hmm. it. Totally dope. Should end it with that. The minute he's like, pause, dramatic effect, he's a triple agent. You you just crossed over into straight up corny as fuck and made, was it John Malkovich? Yeah. Made him sound like a total dumbass. You fucked him. <laughs> you fucked him on you that You fucked one. him. When they go in at the end, and it's a quick scene, they flow in and it's headshots and it's just snapping everybody. Uh -huh. It's like a three second scene. That's the most accurate killing or uh, uh, CQB scene in the entire fucking movie. Hmm. They went in as a team. Uh -huh. They dug their corners, at least from what you could see from the few seconds. They flow in. They start taking shots. Everyone's shooting at the same time. And within seconds, everyone in the room is dead. Hmm. So it just goes to show. And then, of course, they make it three seconds. It's like gone. Right. There and gone. Yeah. It's the most accurate scene in the movie. So you know that they know how to do flow. The, clearly, they had some advisor that knew how to do actual CQB. Right. But they choose in instead to make it people doing it by themselves, dramatize it, them getting shot. <laughs> because look how quick and, and fast and boring it is right. when you do CQB properly. When you want to go, yeah. When you do it right, you flow in, everyone's dead. It's over. It's quick. It's right to the point. And so it, it just it takes away all the drama, I guess. <laughs> I just thought that was an interesting thing that they actually had a good CQB scene in there. And they mm. made it three seconds long. All right, guys. So that's it. There's mile 22 of beers and breakdowns. You guys have been asking for it. There it was. All right, guys. And so at the end, you know my spiel. If you stuck around for this long, you're one of our people. We appreciate you. Most people would have clicked off by now. So if you made it to this point, do us a favor like subscribe and comment those comments work the likes work the subscribes are much appreciated we appreciate every single one so thank you guys so much uh check out the mentor program we are mentoring and coaching people through special operations or just to give you guys the special operations mindset to help you achieve your goals uh, whatever those goals may be we are helping people across the board so go check that out and if you're going special forces or if you're into fitness go check our website at thefngacademy.com uh, we have more ruck trainers hitting the market very soon next week. So maybe they'll probably be sold out actually by the time this comes out. So make sure you sign up for the email list so you don't miss it. Uh, the 2.0s of the ruck trainers will be coming out soon. We'll have a huge influx in inventory so you, they won't sell out within a couple of hours. Um, and they're upgraded substantially. So all aluminum instead of 3D printed. Um, and they're going to be amazing. So go check those out. And also just know that we have a prototype being made of our AR670-1 combat boots. You guys ask us all the time, what are the perfect boots for selection? And I want to be perfectly honest with you. I don't think they exist yet. So we decided to design them. 
We took a zero drop. We took a, a heavy EVA foam for cushion. We took a wide toe box for feet swell. And we made the coolest boot, I think, that has been introduced to the market. Um, we're coming out with it soon. So be on the lookout for that. We have one of the best shoe designers in the business that is crushing it. Thank you to Hank. Shout out to you, Hank. Um, and you guys are going to love these boots. So stick around. Can't wait to show you guys what we got. We'll see you on the next one.